My name is Julia Raskin. I'm based in Singapore and I've been here for 14 years. And for the last two years, I've been running our equities and security services business for Asia. Singapore really, it's, it's constantly on its toes. It's always balancing between its big strategic partnerships with China and the US, but also not forgetting its role within ASEAN. And this country has been excellent at navigating that terrain. With Asia developing so rapidly and really changing in the 14 years we've been here, it's sort of hard to feel that we've almost been in the same place. I mean, Singapore as a city has been virtually rebuilt in that time horizon. And so just like there are many cultures, there are many layers. There is an old Singapore of, you know, old mom and pop shops making dumplings. And then there's some really incredibly futuristic aspects to Singapore. In part, what I think is incredible about this place is just the, the nature, right? I mean, you're on the equator. You know, there are a lot of still wetland reserves. I mean, if you go to the Songhe Bulo wetlands, which is about 20 minute drive from the center of town, there are wild crocodiles all over the place. And, and there are signs that say, you know, if you're not paying attention and it's night, you might get your hand chopped off. At the end of my road is the botanic garden. So for me, I'm a kind of a forest bather. That's the expression they use in Japan. I mean, I need to, after staring at computer screens and Zoom and everything else, I definitely go to the botanic gardens. And actually there are a lot of uh, really untouched parts of the Indonesian archipelago, which has thousands of islands that, where you can swim with manta rays and see Komodo dragons and parrotfish. So that's sort of the direction of travel for us lately. I also think Singapore's food scene, frankly, I think of all the things that I think Singaporeans can be proud of. I mean, but just for the quality and variety of food, Singapore is probably the only uh, city that I know of that has multi Michelin star hawker stalls where you can get meals for $3. The ethnic mix, which translates into the architecture and some of the museums. So for instance, the Asian Civilization Museum is incredible because it has a real culture of, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, early Christianity, as it translates through artifacts, through jewelry. And so I think that ability to weave in all of the multicultural strands really provides a great degree of, of richness. Singapore serves as one of the multiple regional hubs, but it's also one of the top employers in the country. As a result, we really do have unprecedented access to a lot of financial development. We have a seat at the table and we can bring that benefit to our clients. A lot of global clients choose to have their entry point into Asia and into foreign markets in Singapore. We also have very strong uh, relationships with the key clients in Singapore, whether they're you know, sovereign wealth funds, government entities, or private investors. And through them, we get tremendous amount of insight into the dynamics of financial development in the region. So Singapore for me, for city, for financial services, frankly serves as a hub, but also as a country, it has a lot of leadership and experience with doing business with everybody in the region. And that's a huge value that is transferred to me and to my business from our presence here.